Hello my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a fun video about my top favorite prison wife memes that help us to laugh at the situation so we're not just crying. I always say, if we can't laugh, what's our alternative? If you're interested in my top favorite prison wife memes, I'm sure you've seen them all over Instagram. These are my favorite, and if you wanna laugh a little bit with me, please keep watching. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ro. I am the founder of a nonprofit organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I will link it up there. I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members. We don't glorify, we don't glamorize prison or prison wife life here. Frankly, it's the most difficult, suckiest thing that you will ever have to go through. But if you're stuck here, I will teach you how to make the best out of this hopefully one shot not so great deal. We're gonna make lemons out of lemonade together and I will teach you how to squeeze them. That sounds weird. Why? Why do I try to be cute? I don't know. If you like this video and you wanna see more of this pretty little face, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and also ding that little bell to be notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we go live on the days in between. But we haven't been recently and I apologize for that. Let's do it ASAP. I shouldn't even make promises like that, you guys. My life has just gotten really busy and hectic, and it's really hard. This is not like a boo-hoo, but it's hard to find time for YouTube when you already have a full-time job. You have to support a loved one on the inside. I try to work out as often as possible. Even that has been slacking recently to make my videos. So I'm just saying that to say, I'm not complaining. I love every second of what I do. I love coming up with ideas for content. I love filming. I love, love, love editing. I love interacting with you guys. I love helping you guys. It's just that you ask me why I stopped doing lives. That's why. So we'll probably do a little bit more like we used to on my lunch break. That was really helpful and fun. Okay. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the memes. This will probably be just a part one. I did not have time to reach out to my fellow Instagram ladies. So if you have a favorite prison wife meme and you wanna see a part two or favorite meme period and you wanna see a part two, send them over to me, ro at strongprisonwivesandfamilies.com and we can do a part two to this video. But let's get started. Ah ha ha, this one's so funny. It says, <laughs> me running to try to be the first one in that processing line at visit. And then it says, hashtag, gotta be first in that visiting room, LOL. Hashtag, just can't get to his arms quickly enough. Oh boy, is that true. Or I should say, oh girl, is that true. We are all fighting for that top spot. And if you're new here and you don't have somebody who's in prison, that's because what they do, at least where I go, you are allowed on the property at eight o'clock in the morning. Processing is supposed to start at eight o'clock in the morning. Usually it's more like a quarter to nine, which is fine. You just get in line and wait, but it's not so fine because what happens is they stop and shut you down until somewhere between 9.15 and 9.30 so they can do a count and you can't get back in there until 10.45, 11 if count clears in time, if there are no problems. So potentially you could get up at five, six in the morning. Some people even drive through the night. You get to the facility, sometimes you're kicked off the property because you're not there in time. And then you are sitting there and a family comes in and they're slow or something's wrong with their paperwork or they're not clearing the metal detector. And then the cop has a friend walk in and they chit chat for 15 minutes and then they call the next visitor or they start late. You could potentially leave your house at two o'clock in the morning the night before, get to the facility a couple minutes before eight o'clock and not get in to see your loved one until noon. It has happened to me before when a bus came in and you have to fill out paperwork. So I was there at eight o'clock. I was towards the end of the line. It was a really busy day. I went to go fill out that paperwork and they grabbed all of the pens off of the table. So none of us could fill out the paperwork and they handed them to each other and they all got in a line off of that shuttle. And I was 20 people deep and I did not get into processing until one o'clock in the afternoon that day. I got to the facility at like, I think we could get there at 7.30 back then. So I get that meme with my whole heart and soul. And if you do, give this video a thumbs up too. <laughs> the next one is funny. When you know everybody at visit, hey Mark, tell your mom the cookies were great. How was your aunt's surgery? Oh, so true, so, so true. And I have a video coming, don't be this person at visit. So I'll refrain from 
making my comments about that girl. But at the same time, I get it. When you've been doing this for so long, you start recognizing faces. You know what's the saddest to me is when you start watching the kids grow up. When I started visiting Adam at McKean, there was a woman who brought in her infant just a couple of days or months old. Now that kid is 10 years old, there's no relief for us yet. That's how you really realize the years are moving by and passing by is when you watch these kids grow up in the visit room and you almost become their family. So yes, I get it. It's so funny because sometimes the visiting cops will be like, oh, can you just help her out? <laughs> She's new, which reminds me of the story about the girl who took off her pants at visit. Yeah, seriously, not clickbait. I don't know if that's even clickbait if it's not in the title, but that's a serious story and I'll link it above because whoa. But the cops will come up to me and say that and I'm like, oh, I'm a vet, but I don't know if that's like a good title to be veteran at this or if it's the most embarrassing thing in the whole entire world because I've been doing this for so long. Okay, next up. Ha <laughs> ha This is my favorite. The way you sag your pants and try to get into a visit. Hashtag the things we do to get in. Hashtag ugh. Lots of people mock prison wife memes. I spoke to the woman behind dot dot dot. Ha <laughs> ha! This is so true. I can't even tell you the things that I've done to make sure that my outfit gets into visit. The reason if you don't have a loved one in prison is because they're not going to let you in with tight pants, especially if the tight pants are on your curvy parts. They will sometimes, this is awful, but sometimes where I've gone in the past, they will allow somebody in who's like a stick figure skinny wearing a certain outfit. Somebody can come in wearing the exact same thing. If she has like a beautiful, bootylicious, bodacious, curvy, I'm jealous of body, she's not gonna get in wearing the exact same thing. The more curves you have for the guys to look at in there, the more that you're gonna be discriminated against and the stricter they are gonna be about your outfit. Is that fair? No. Does it happen? Yeah. Do you have any control over it? The only way you can control it is to bring a backup outfit in your car. So I've done things where like, if I'm wearing a shirt underneath another shirt, like a tank top, I'll roll up that strap and I will tuck it into my bra to make sure that the neckline is all the way up there and there's no such thing as cleavage or like this woman, I'll pull my pants down a little bit so there's a little bit more room. I've done it where I, <laughs> One girl and I used to take, when they would let you in with kind of holes in your jeans, but not open gauging holes, we would take double-sided tape and we would close the holes in our jeans. And then when we got in, the first thing you do is you go to the bathroom and you're like adjusting, like, okay, whew, normal. Let me just fix the holes in my jeans. The things that we do. Comment below with your things that you do. We can make a whole video about the things that we do. One thing is for certain prisoners and their lives, their lives, no, prisoners and their loved ones and wives are some really resourceful, smart people. Okay, the next one. Fools be like, when I get out this time, I'm gonna marry you and live happily ever after. I love you so much. Also, don't forget to send me the money for soap, buzz, and coffee, okay? So true, so sad, but so true. He could love you and be your top number one and you could be his top number one and he wants to be with you on the outside and there are still gonna be times where he's like, baby, I love you so much, I miss you so much, can you please not forget to put the money on the books this time? Because he genuinely needs it. But a lot more times, there are gonna be the guys who, especially meet you on the pen pal ads and they're gonna be like, baby, baby, I love you, you're my number one, I can't wait to get out and marry you, oh and I'm gonna need some soup, and I'm gonna need some coffee, and I'm gonna need some this, and I'm gonna need some that. So make sure you put the money on the books. And if you don't put the money on the books, or you don't have the money, you're gonna get an earful, he's gonna disappear. I've talked about this on a quadrillion other videos in the past. Number one, first one that I can think of off the top of my head would be the one about the girl who did the boyfriend check on um, TikTok, and I'll post it in the cards up there. Okay, the next one. When people are talking about inmates and you're just standing there like, watch your mouth, mother Ah, so true. Here's a story. I was in a meeting one time and people started bashing inmates and I was just sitting there like, do, 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 do. You're infuriated. You're so pissed off. But in some situations, you have to bite your tongue. Another time I was in work and they were got really strict at that point. We had merged with another company, so their rules were absolutely out of control, micromanaging us like there was nobody's business. And people started to refer to it as like cell block 255 or whatever the number on the building was. That's not right, so 
whatever it was. And I was so in my feels about it. Like, ugh, if these people only knew. God, I would much rather be here than in prison, even though it sucks. And I had to kind of have a talk with my own self. Like, girl, relax. They don't really know what they're saying. They don't really mean it like that. Get out of your feels. It's not that big of a deal. Nobody's like doing the bashing tough on crime, do the crime, do the time situation. So re freaking lax and take it down a couple of notches. But I understand what this one's saying because I have been in situations where it was warranted. And thank God it hasn't been recently since I started doing advocacy work. I started my channel, Strong Prison Wives and Families. And I know the statistics now because I'm armed and dangerous. When people start talking, I can very easily say, excuse me, one in every four women and one in every eight men has a loved one who's incarcerated. One in every like 20 something children have a parent who's incarcerated. You are insulting if there are, let's say eight people in this conference room, at least two women, at least one man. And if there's eight people, a few of those could have a parent or could have a child whose parent who's incarcerated. So watch your mouth. You have no idea what you're talking about. So I don't wanna get lost in this one. This is a fun video, but yeah, there's that. <laughs> so good, everyone can relate to this. When your phone dies and you don't have a charger and babe is calling soon, OMG, can you not relate? If I have like my battery right now, can you see where it's at? I should actually charge that right now because I'm going to get my nails done and I wanna play on my phone while I'm there. But I'm like, where's the charger? Where's the charger? Where's the charger? God forbid my phone is red, oh, the battery is red, or the phone dies and he's supposed to call, or there were a couple of times where my phone glitched and I knew it was ringing and I could see it was him because unknown is flashing on my caller ID and the phone goes black. So now I have no way to accept the call, to press the number five when the lady comes in and says, this call is from a federal prison. Press five to, you guys all know. But regardless, I can't answer the phone. So I flipped. And then thank God Adam knows, like he'll call me right back. He'll usually call twice, sometimes three times in a row before he gives up. We've all needed that oxygen mask on before. Mm-hmm, for sure, girl. Actually, I also have a video that I made a long time ago about learning how to not have the phone attached to your hip that I made after I went running with my phone one time and I realized that I was just, it was too much. Cause I get having the phone attached and I get it, especially when he's supposed to be calling that you don't want to miss that call. But also it is not the end of the world. It's not gonna crumble. He's not gonna die. He's not gonna never call you again if you miss a call. So not making this a serious video again, but just FYI. Phone bill, commissary, love letter, visit. It's been handled. Woo! Yes, just like I was saying at the beginning of this video, you've got a lot going on when you're a prison wife and a mom. <laughs> My phone fell. I love to try to play things off, but I know you could hear it. You have so much going on when you're a prison wife, when you have a job, when you're a mom, minus everything else when you're a mom, period, end of statement, sentence, done, over. But you know what I'm saying. We have so much going on. We have so many responsibilities and it's like, yeah, phone bill, check, commissary money, check, love letter for him, check, visit, check, I got it, we good, we good, I got it, hashtag, Prison wives are Wonder Woman, Superwoman, Supergirl, whatever title you want, you got, because we are strong, tenacious, and badass. This one is so funny because I'm so dramatic in the things I say. It's Kris Jenner and she, it says, prison wives be like, I don't have any self-service here and it's giving me a rash. My thing I always say is I'm sweaty or I'm itchy. I'm so dramatic, but I get it. Same thing as the meme before. I don't have any battery or I don't have any cell service. Oh my God, I'm getting sweaty. Oh my God, I'm getting itchy. Oh my God, it's giving me a rash. So Kris Jenner, girl, I feel you, I hear you. If you guys want to share any of your prison wife memes, let me know because this was fun for me and it's also a way that I could teach people who don't have a loved one in prison about what we go through in a silly, fun, comical way. And that is my favorite way to deal with life is to be badass at it, boss babe it up, but also keep yourself laughing because laughter genuinely is the best medicine. And if you're not laughing, 
what is your alternative in this life? And I have to say, if you're down and depressed every single day of your prison relationship, it's time to reevaluate. This is not easy. This is hard. This is the most excruciating thing you'll ever have to go through. But if you can't find a silver lining and laugh, that's why I'm here. That's why my favorite videos are the ones that are kind of comedy. Because I want to share a laugh with you and teach you that it's hard and it's tough, but you can get through this. You could slap a smile on your face. You could do it. You can make the best out of it and you can leave them all wondering how you're doing it with a smile and laughing and having fun because life is too short to not have fun. Life is too short to just lay around and wait for your husband to come home from jail and do nothing but sob and sulk and this is getting too long. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer and Lord knows Adam and I are too, hopefully closer than any of us even think. And hopefully he comes home so fast, we'll all be laughing about how soon it is. It's not gonna be funny because it just needs to happen. We're in overtime. <laughs> Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. But in the meantime, keep laughing, you guys. Just keep laughing. Mwah.